we have a consumer with a utility function x, y. We have a budget constraint, x plus y is less than or equal to 50. And we have a coupon constraint, 2x plus y is less than or equal to 60. What combination of x and y maximizes utility while satisfying these conditions? Let's set up our Lagrange equation first. So our Lagrange equation is going to be of x, y, lambda 1, and lambda 2. And this is going to be equal to our utility function, the function we want to optimize, x, y, plus lambda 1, our constraint budget of 50, minus x, minus y. So this is for constraint 1, plus lambda 2 times my constraint budget of 60, minus 2x, minus y. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to assume one of these constraints will be naturally satisfied. So which constraint do you want to assume is naturally going to be satisfied? Constraint 2 will be satisfied. So to assume that constraint 2 will be naturally satisfied, what we're going to do is we're going to set lambda 2 to be equal to 0, thus ignoring this term. Now I do my derivatives with respect to x. I get y minus lambda 1. With respect to y, I get x minus lambda 1. And with respect to lambda 1, I get 50 minus x minus y. I set these all to be equal to 0. From this first equation, I get lambda 1 is equal to y. From the second equation, I get lambda 1 is equal to x. Therefore, y should be equal to x. Substituting that into this third equation, I get 50 minus x minus y is equal to x is equal to 0. 50 minus 2x is equal to 0. 50 will therefore be equal to 2x, moving that over to the other side of the equation. Dividing both sides by 2, I get x is equal to 25. And therefore, y is also equal to x, will also be 25. This is a solution based on constraint 1. I have to check constraint 2. So I have to test that this assumption, this means that I'm assuming constraint 2 is naturally satisfied. I have to test that assumption. So I'm going to take this constraint. 2x plus y is less than or equal to 60. My second constraint. And I'm going to substitute my x values. 2 times 25 plus y value of 25 is less than or equal to 60. I get 75 is less than or equal to 60. Did we satisfy the second constraint? No. So that means it's not greater than. Constraint 2 is not satisfied. So what do I do? I'm going to do the Lagrange with the second constraint. So now I'm going to go back to my Lagrange equation, but this time I'm going to assume that the first lambda is going to be equal to 0, i.e., that the first constraint is naturally satisfied when we meet constraint two. So here is my function. Let me just copy that over. Now this time I'm assuming lambda one is equal to zero. So I'm ignoring this term. I do my derivatives. With respect to x, I get y minus two lambda two. With respect to y, I get x minus lambda two. And with respect to lambda 2, I get 60 minus 2x minus y. Now I set these all to be equal to 0. From this first equation, I get 2 lambda 2 is equal to y, or lambda 2 is equal to 0.5y. From the second equation, I get lambda 2 is equal to x. Combining those two, Lambda 2 is equal to lambda 2. I therefore get x is equal to 0.5y. Now putting that into my third equation, 
I get 60 minus 2 times my x value of 0 0.5y minus y is equal to 0. I get 60 minus 2y is equal to 0. 60 is equal to 2y. Moving this over to the other side. Y is e therefore equal to 30. And since x is equal to 0 0.5 times my y value of 30, x will be equal to 15. Now before I say I'm satisfied with this, what do I do? I need to check my constraint. I need to check the assumption that constraint 1 was satisfied. So constraint 1 was x plus y is less than or equal to 50. So I'm going to substitute in these values. 15 plus 30 is less than or equal to 50. 45 is less than or equal to 50. Is this constraint satisfied? Yes, 45 is less than 50. I'm happy I've solved my problem. Now I'm going to underline these and make these my final answer. Which constraint is binding? Which constraint was the one that we solved it based on? We solved it assuming constraint one was naturally satisfied. Therefore, constraint two was binding. Constraint two was binding. As we used constraint two, that was the one that was being employed in our solution. We assumed constraint one was being um, naturally satisfied. Now, visually, that was our scenario two that we looked at. Those were our constraints. So you can even see this in the visual right here. When we did our optimization with constraint two, constraint two being our binding constraint.